Hi, so we have already finished quite a few templates such as the base HTML which is going to be extended to every other template so which has the nav bar, all the CSS and JavaScript uh, calls then we also did the template view that simple about uh, that HTML page where we just had two basic lines we also did the post list which is going to be the list of all the blog titles and the comments etc that acts our home page and uh, then once you click on one of those blog titles or the comments it takes you to the post detail page where that's the actual blog content so let's now continue by filling out the rest of the templates and we are going to start off by doing the post form so if you ever want to edit or create a new post you are going to be taking the post from that uh, html template so that's where we uh, start and let's hop over to the editor and get started so here we have the post from the HTML ready to go and I have the ex I have the extents uh, things in here and the block content plus end block also and let's just put a header in there. So we'll say heading one and we will say something like new post and we are going to create a form uh, here. So we'll call form and we'll give it a class post form in case we ever want to have a class that uh, does something with this. Uh, okay, so does not uh, really need an action because we are using Django for that and then the method should be post I always like having it in capital letter just because that makes it more clear to me so I will put that in and then if any form as we know we need a CSV token uh, so we say uh, this CSRF token and uh, CSRF underscore token and then I am going to inject the actual form SP and uh, remember back in that form page we had uh, that widgets attribute which is going to uh, let me have classes to individual elements here so in case I never really need to use post form I already have the class setup where I can actually grab particular elements or widgets from that form and then finally we are going to need a button so we'll create a button it will be type submit so we can actually submit this and let's give it a class that kind of goes with the look and feel of bootstrap so we'll say let's give it the save class in case we ever want to affect this particular button and we'll say button save button button uh, default so you probably notice I am kind of creating classes as I go along with the templates some of these I will use some uh, I will not ever use but that's nice about these classes as if I ever need to actually do some CSS editing on the particular uh, button it already has its own class call which I can add to more submit buttons and what's also nice is uh, just reading the template itself make it a lot easier to understand what's going on with these classes regardless if I use them or not so let me collapse this uh, directory tree and give ourselves a little more room the name of this button we actually don't need it uh, to have a name so I will delete that and let's just have this uh, be save and then that's the end of the form just uh, form the token and then the button itself so here is where I am going to call a script uh, so you remember back to when we were exploring the medium editor get a page uh, so um, I am going to call a script here and basically follow along with that they said so you can check back on that video or on that demo page but what they said to do is create this editor variables here on the page and then set it equal to uh, new so uh, uh, new medium uh, editor and uh, this have uh, this uh, editable or uh, however you could say that and then uh, save that and remember that this dot editable uh, class is attached here as a widget okay so if you go back to the actual models of forms so let's come back to models or actually it was under forms come back here there uh, it is so um, here on their post forms remember we are added this in the editable class for the text itself so that's essentially what's going to help us link 
when we are working with the post form page right here this medium editor and uh, had too many is there so save that and we should be good to go there so uh, that's our post form page uh, now let's create a post draft list so uh, maybe you have not published this yet in which case you have the list of all your drafts so this one's also going to be quite simple we are going to have a for loop that just going to go for the post and then give some sort of creation date so let's do that we will say uh, for post in uh, post and then uh, uh, we need an end for here okay so and then what i am going to do is add in a div so we'll call this the post class again may or may not use this but kind of help me read along here so uh, actually we'll have a paragraph tag and give that uh, to a class i think we were calling them date now we'll say created and then we are going to inject here post uh, dot created underscore dates and we have seen before uh, i can add in this template filter where we will say date and let's just have it be the uh, this date uh, okay d d dash and uh, then what we are going to do next is uh, let's have a heading one with an anchor tag where the ref will take you to that actual post detail page so we'll go to urls uh, post detail post detail so with the primary key being equal to the post.pk and this will just be the post title so the post title will uh, take you to that post detail page which kind of makes sense so collapsing the directory tree you get a little more space and then you, you will have the actual post text so we'll inject that in as well post dot text and i'm going to use another filter called truncate characters which is just going to help this as far as formatting not necessarily uh, but kind of up to you so we'll have truncates uh, and this uh, is equal to 200 okay and so that's it for the draft list so so basically what's going to do is uh, go through all the post in the post and then say when it was created and if you click on the link it will take you to that uh, post detail page and it will truncate some characters so you don't see everything so we'll save that and now we have our post draft list ready to go let us start with this delete view so we have this post confirmed delete that's actually a really simple uh, once you click on the delete view there needs to be some sort of a success url that will say so hey do you actually want to delete this so we'll create a form so very basic form does not need an action and we we'll actually don't even really need to give it a class and it's essentially just a button here and uh, what we are going to do is inside this form i am going to create the csrf token again and uh, then we'll just have something like uh, so are you sure you want to delete question mark and let's actually inject object here so this is something that delete views does automatically the object itself has that name or so you want to delete it as we saw before when we were working with the class based views and then we'll have an input and the type will be submit and let's give it a class let's say button button and danger which is always a good call when you are going to do a delete view have it be danger in our case where uh, you would not be using this coloring eventually the loader will uh, override that coloring but for your basic is 
sites where you do not have we don't have such uh, CSS calls with the color changing. A danger is a good call for these sort of delete buttons. Uh, it does not need a name, but it let's give it a value, something like confirm or delete or whatever you want. Save that, and that's it for the post. Confirm delete page. So really similar to uh, what we have done in the post with the delete views. So that's it for that. Uh, we have post form HTML ready to go comment form is something we have not done yet so that's going to be really similar form to be to the draft or the post form and uh, let's create h1 and this will be a new comment and then what uh, we are going to do is say form and uh, we can give it a class post form just uh, so i can refer it uh, later so it does not need any sort of action call and then what we are going to do here is give it csrf token and then say form sp give it a button and uh, this button will say it's a submit type button okay does not need a name but let's give it a class we'll give it the same class that we did earlier uh, so button button default and does not need a name so we'll take that out okay but we'll give it some text here that says something like post comment and that can be the end of the form and uh, yeah so uh, since I want the form or the comment form it's up to have the same capabilities of the medium editor I will add in that script here as well So kind of uh, up to you whether you want the comments to have such flexibility But just so we explore the what's possible here. We are going to do the same thing so we say the variable editor as equal to new medium editor and uh, then we'll just adjust we'll adjust the class to be editable or uh, okay so then semicolon to the end here so let's open up all the templates and make sure we finished all of them we have the about page ready to go we have our base html ready to go comments from ready post confirm deletes ready detail page in the post draft list ready post forms ready post list is ready and then we still have this login html that's also ready looks like we finished all our templates so let's come over here to blog that css blog.css and uh, finish just a couple of other these css and this is basically totally optional and this is where a lot of your personal choices will come into play as far as what you actually want the blog to looks like so don't worry too much about what we are going to be doing here this is just so it lines up with the actual example code from the notes so i have taken care of this tech font tech font that's the font that goes in that nav bar so we have big brand that just makes it a little larger center stage just kind of centers things a little bit more and then we have the loader so i am going to create kind of something that says here color changer blue comment that out and add in some of my own classes so Something we also did uh, while this post date which I am going to say text line center and some of the classes we made we don't be calling here or just keep that in mind and then I am also going to create a post title so post title will give it the same font family as also one but maybe make the let's let's say font size a little bigger so is the actual title of the post font uh, family russo one and then let's make the post title like three and um, just so it's quite a bit larger and then we'll have it uh, be text align center so it is uh, centered there so that's the post title and uh, 
then for the actual post content itself so uh, i will uh, i will i will have a post content class and then i am going to give that the font family or as well let's say that monstrate uh, okay then i will add in a font size that makes it the same font size as the post detail view there we go now when you are editing it or viewing it all is in the same size and i believe we already did something called center stage here so that's once good and something else we want to do maybe have those buttons so i think we created one called btn okay and i'm going to add in position to be absolute and we'll see if this actually effects and we will bring it all the way to the right we have zero pixels so that's just kind of the add comment button shifting all the way to the right and we already have big brand ready to go i believe if we scroll up big brands ready to go so we finished off the css in the this the rest of the template so we should be mostly good to go we might need to do a quick review due and bug finding but we finished basically like 99 percent of the site so coming up next we are going to kind of wrap everything up and see if everything worked maybe debug a little bit okay that's it